at least certain parts of the word, the author seemed to almost presuppose contact with disincarnate beings. One passage that comes to mind immediately is 1 John 4 in mm -hmm. testing the spirits. Mm -hmm. Since Christians and Jews seem to be prohibited from rendering the veil, so to speak, in esoteric mm -hmm. parlance, how would a Christian, especially after the apostolic era, be expected to come into contact with an Elohim? What do you think was going through John's mind as he wrote? Well, testing the spirits doesn't of necessity imply soliciting the spirits or going out for look going out looking for spirits to test. Uh, if you read through First John, the the whole notion of testing the spirits is linked to false teaching. It's very clear, very overt. So obviously, I would say First John wouldn't be legitimizing self initiation into false teaching or self initiation into some sort of episodic encounter where you could be misled. I think the point of the language is that claims about spiritual truth, uh, in, in the context of First John, it's really focused on Christology, but claims about spiritual truth that contradict apostolic teaching are presumed to come from competing spirits, competing, you know, you know, opposition, opposition in the spirit world. And so those claims need to be evaluated. They need to be judged. They need to be tested. Uh, if, you, if you look at First John 4, 6, Again, right there in the passage, it juxtaposes the spirit of truth with the spirit of error. You know, I, I think all that illustrates Scripture's elevation of revelation over personal experience. Now, the two are not necessarily mutually exclusive, but if the source of both is the true God, then both of those things will not be contradictory. Scripture consistently moves us to judge personal experience by the revelation given by God through inspiration to the masses. In other words, this whole idealized, I'm, I'm, living, I'm, I'm doing my own thing here to, to tap into divine knowledge or have an encounter with God. It, it's quite contrary to both textual, you know, both, both explicit passages and whole, the whole patterning uh, of what's going on uh, in, in both Testaments, I would say.